Hi guys, welcome back to Metabox Tutorial. Today, I am going to create an online reservation form for restaurants which allows customers to choose a set of food or private room and also know about the total amount in advance. I am using the Metabox plugin and installed it. You can install and activate it directly from the dashboard. Besides that, I also need the support from its extensions in the Metabox AIO. The Metabox AIO is available in the Developer Bundle or Lifetime Bundle. For the Core Bundle, it has the MB Core which has no extension for front-end. So, it is not useful enough in this case. To see and activate the extensions we want in the Metabox AIO, go to Extensions. Please make sure that you've activated these following extensions already by the ticks, MB Admin Columns, MB Custom Post Type and Custom Taxonomies, MB Frontend Submission. This extension is available in just Metabox AIO, not in MB Core. That's why we need Metabox AIO here. Next, Metabox Builder and Metabox Columns. Okay, now, go to the stage. We need a custom post type to save the reservation information. For the details of creating a new custom post type, we've had a tutorial in this channel, please take a look. Each reservation will be saved in a post in this post type and will display in the list here. I have made a field group for the reservation in advance. For the details of creating and configuring custom fields, please refer to the video I suggested above. Let's look at the details of each field settings. I set this ID like this to make this field as the title. The set lunch field is in the select advanced type, so it has the choices section. Here is the place to put the options for selection. On the left of the colon, this is the value of the option, and I set the price of the food set here. On the right, the label of the option, is the name of the set as well. I did likewise in the private room field with the prices and names of the rooms. As you know, restaurant owners usually want to see all the reservation information right from the admin screen. So, I will display these fields as the admin columns by a tick here. This setting is provided by the MB admin columns extension. When you tick this box, some others will appear for further configuration you must choose an option in this column position section. For others, they are optional. Furthermore, I also want the fields displayed into two columns in the form, so I change the number from 12 to 6 here. This setting is provided by the Metabox columns extension. I've interpreted it thoroughly in the tutorial on creating an online admission form. Please dig in there to know more about the principle. For other fields, I set them as the admin columns and 6 in the columns setting as well. Lastly, remember to go to the Settings tab, and choose the post type we've created in the Location section. Back to the Reservations post type, here are the fields as the admin columns. And, here is the form, in the back end, with two columns. I have a page for the reservation. It's blank now, I want it to have a different look from the other pages on my website, so I'll create a new template for it. In the template folder of the theme, create a new file with this code. Here is the name of the template. Pay attention to these classes. I create them to define the two columns for styling later. The content section will be on the left. And, on the right, is a sidebar. This is its ID. I made it with an iframe of Google Maps to visually show the restaurant location on the map. I pinned it on the map and just copied this code. Your work is just adjusting the width and height. I also added the contact information such as address, email, phone number, and social linkings. I used eRocket, a plugin developed by eLightUp, our company, the owner of Metabox as you know. It's free and available on WordPress.org, so you can try it. Back to the template, save it with this name. It will be used in the next step. Now, set the reservation page to the new template. And, we got this. Let's include the reservation form to this page. Back to the custom fields menu, you will see all the field groups you have with their shortcode here. It's available only when you've activated the MB frontend submission extension already. Copy this shortcode. Then, paste it to the content of the page. You see that? This attribute. I'll delete it to make these default fields disappear. And, add a button like this. To know more about the attributes, please go to the documentation. Let's see how they display. It needs to be styled a little bit. 
add this code. This is the name of the template file we created. Do you remember it? Here, I use font awesome for icons. And here, the classes for the left column and right column. Now, go to the functions file and enqueue the CSS file and font awesome. Refresh the reservation page, we got a new look here. Such a better look. I'm filling out the form. But, the amount still is zero. To make it run, we must use code. Back to the functions file, add this code. This is a hook to create an action named total. This is the function to load the values of all the variables, and then put them into the following formula. These are the variables that are loaded. This is to check if the variable has any value. If it has, the value will be admitted. Otherwise, the variable will be applied to the default value, in this case, it is 1. You can set the default value as you want. This is to return the value of the total variable in JSON. It is calculated by this formula. But, you know what? Every variable has no value but the default one so far. I must create a JS file in the JS folder. This code is to recognize the options chosen by the customer on the reservation form by the IDs of the fields. Then, assign the values of those options to the corresponding variables. After that, perform an AJAX request to send the data of those variables to the total action that we have created in the functions file. This is to set which variable in the action receives the value. This is the URL of the AJAX. If the request succeeds, this will call the value returned by the functions file then print to the custom field which has the ID as amount. Next, we need to go back to the functions file to enqueue the JS file and URL of the AJAX. Note that these names are the ones I created. You must set them to be the same in both lines. These are from the URL. You must keep them the same. If you change them in the URL, you must change them here as well. Save. And now, enter information into the form once again. You see, the amount changed, so, I'm done. What do you think? If you find this tutorial helpful, like this video and subscribe to our channel for more upcoming tutorials. Bye.